صلی علی رسول الکریم باب یوم لیلۃ القدر من الیمان حدثنا ابو الیمان قال اخبرنا شعيب قال حدثنا ابو زناد عن العارجي عن ابي هريره رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ما يكون ليلة القدر إيمانا واحتسابا وغفر له ما تقدم من ذنبه رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل نقدة من لساني يفقه قولي يا رب صلي وسلم دائما ابدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كلهم يا رب زدني علما respected elders young brothers friends and members and sisters <coughs> with the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here we are in the masjid we have offered salatul isha so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it <coughs> now we are sitting in the circle of hadith from the book Sahih al-Bukhari. The undergoing chapter is Kitab al-Iman, the chapter of Iman, in which Imam al-Bukhari rahimahullah has quoted the ahadith <coughs> which, in which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam states the amal which are part of Iman, which increases the believer's Iman. Last week, the hadith which we explained in that very hadith, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam warned us some actions which can ruin and destroy our Iman. And he mentioned four signs of hypocrisy. If any Muslim adopts these four signs, which are mentioned in the hadith, then he will be a hypocrite in his actions, not in his iman, in his faith, but in his action. In today's session, the hadith which I just read before you is the hadith regarding Laylatul Qadr. Laylatul Qadr, the night of dignity which takes place in the month of Ramadan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed this night in the month of Ramadan. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran mentions this night, Laylatul Qadr khayr min alfi shahr. This one night is better than the 1000 months, meaning 84 years. Whosoever will stand in the Laylatul Qadr for Ibadat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward him the reward of 84 years, as if he has stood in the worship for 84 years. And remember this Laylatul Qadr in the Ramadan we have been given, although the Ramadan, the fasts of Ramadan, they they were prescribed upon every nation, every community in the past. But this special night was only given to the Ummah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and no one else. Only the Ummah of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam have been given this night. Here the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentions, Umayyakum, whosoever will establish the worship meaning whosoever will stand 
in the in the worship in this very night for worship now standing now don't only think that one has to offer the tahajjud prayer meaning standing mean man yaqum mean one who stands in the laylatul qadr for worship which means standing and meaning in the tahajjud prayer in the nafl prayer but the ulama is saying this includes every worship in the night of dignity if you offer the prayers nafli prayers the hajjud prayer or if someone recites the quran or if someone does just does the zikr by subhanallah alhamdulillah all this will be included in the worship whether you offer the salat al tahajjud or you read the quran or you do verbal dhikr of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all this comes in man yaqum the one who stands now in this hadith prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned two things without these two things no one worship ibadat will be accepted and this hadith tells us not every effort no every action is beneficial and acceptable in the sight of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you just keep this in your mind always not every effort every mehnat is accepted by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala no every ibadat is accepted in the in, in the court of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without the two condition if the two conditions are found then we can hope then you should remember any ibadat we do there are conditions for the ibadat if all the conditions are found in that ibadat then we can hope that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept it number two we have to make a dua to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that oh allah i've done this you accept it if allah accepts and then this will be the grace of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we should hope always whenever we do something good we should hope that inshallah allah will accept it and number two we should make a dua to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, oh allah i've done it you accept it and the two conditions are iman and ihtisaba rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is whosoever establish the worship in the night of dignity laylatul qadr allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive his previous sins but with the two conditions iman wa ihtisaba in the state of iman number one if one has iman if one has iman then inshallah his amal will be accepted but with iman there is another condition and that is ihtisaba now this this term ihtisaba means to hope that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant me reward upon this good action to expect that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept it and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will will give, will give me the ajr and reward if these two conditions are found in any amal then we can hope that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept it iman wa ihtisaba in a, in another verse of surah bani israil allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says woman arad al akhirata wa sa'alaha sa'yaha wa huwa mu'minun fa ulaika kana sa'yuhum mashkura allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says that whosoever chooses the akhirat whosoever opts for akhirat wa sa'alaha sa'yaha and then he makes efforts for it as due now making effort first of all allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says or other akhirah any amal you do in our side should be akhirat should be allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should be jannat if this is the niyat intention then we can hope from allah that he will accept it which means sincerity ikhlas someone asked hasan e basri rahmatullah alayhi hasan e basri rahmatullah was asked tell us the reality of ikhlas what is ikhlas he soon asked hasan e basri rahmatullah alayhi that oh hasan e basri or oh, imam tell us explain us what is ikhlas he said the reality ikhlas sincerity is that you should try to keep your amal secret you should do it secretly i mean there are you know there are actions that we have you have to do openly you know offering the five daily fard prayers in the congregation hajj is something that is done openly but there are actions that we can it's up to us 
you know, offering our optional prayers at night. He says, to, ke to keep your amal, your righteous deeds in secret, this is the reality of ikhlas. And then he says, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala discloses your amal to people, and if the people come to know that you are doing these good deeds, then you should thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then you should thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and never think, and never think that people came to know because I was doing this good do this righteous deed. No, always you should think that this is because of the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Maybe Allah has accepted the amal and now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has disclosed this amal to other people. Now here, one thing I, I need to tell you on that is, when you come to know that so and so is doing a good deed, you know, we should try to imitate him. We should try to imitate him. That he is doing a good deed, why don't I should be doing the same good deed? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, today in worldly affairs we race with one another, we compete one another. But unfortunately, in the good deeds, we do not try to comp you know, compete with one another, we do not try to race one another. All we race in is the worldly affairs. In the dunya we amal, you know, in the affairs, you know, we race one another. We try to, you know, go from, from ahead of one another. But in the religious amals, in the, in the good deeds, righteous deeds, you know, we don't seem to copy one another, imitate one another. If we see a person, a believer, he is doing the recitation of Quran, then we should ask ourselves, am I doing the same thing? Am I doing the recitation? If we see someone coming to the masjid regularly for five daily prayers, then we should learn a lesson from him. We should learn a lesson from him. We should, we should imitate him. We should imitate him that, look, he is doing this. He is going to the masjid for regular prayers. Then why should I not go to the masjid and offer the five daily prayers in the masjid? If we see someone in the masjid, you know, he tries to, you know, keep himself, you know, uh, silent. He does not talk to anyone. You know, he avoids talking of worldly things. You know, he engages himself in the, in the, in the zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then we should imitate him. We should imitate this person and we should say, we should ask ourselves, we should tell ourselves, look, he's sitting in the masjid, he's not talking with anyone and, you know, he's engaged in the zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I should do the same. I should, I should copy him, I should imitate him. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Woman arad al-akhirata, woman arad al-akhirata, whosoever opts for akhirat, meaning when you do something good, when you do righteous deed, your needs should be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in other words, Allah says, for man kana yarju liqa'a rabbihi, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, who hopes to meet his Rabb, fal ya'mal amalan saliha, he must, Allah is saying, he must do righteous deeds. What we learn from here, righteous deeds. Now remember one thing, no one will enter into paradise because of his good actions. We should always keep this in our mind. Each and every one who will go into paradise, he will go into paradise because of the grace of Allah and the rahmat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But remember, don't let the shaitan deceive us. If this is the case, we will not enter into paradise because of our amal, our righteous deeds, then what's the point of doing good deeds? You know, this, this, this thought can occur in our mind and shaitan can play with this and he can whisper this in your mind. There's no need. There is no need to do good deeds. But remember, the good deeds become the cause of the rahmat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They pull the rahmat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The deeds, the deeds bring you close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you become close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you will become the worthy of the rahmat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the amal, the righteous deeds are the cause of the rahmat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They will make you worthy of the rahmat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the, it is mentioned, one of the companions, you know, he, he used to do, he used to do, uh, he used to go in the, in the path of Allah, fight against the enemies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he, you know, he wanted, you know, he, he wanted his, his bravery to be recognized by people. You know, he wanted to be appreciated by people. He wanted people to appreciate him. He wanted the people to praise him that how brave he is, that he is fighting in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
the verse was this verse was revealed for man kana yarju liqa rabbihi fal yamal amalan saliha who wants to who hopes that he to beat his rabb number one he must do righteous deeds he must you know without the righteous deeds you know we cannot please allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we cannot come close to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then allah wala yushrik bi ibadat bi ibadat rabbihi ahada and number two he must not associate anyone in the ibadat of his lord you know he should you know his ibadat should be sincerely for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now sometimes you know sometimes we when you are doing a righteous deed and people saw you doing the righteous deed now this this a joy you know this happiness occurred in your mind you look you know i was doing this good deed and someone saw me doing this good deed abu hurairah radhiyallahu ta'ala who he said to prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam prophet of allah sometimes i am at home sitting on my prayer mat you know engaged in the dhikr of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all of a sudden someone comes in and he sees me doing the dhikr of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then i like it you know i feel good in my my heart that he saw me in this good state you know he saw me while i was doing a uh, uh, righteous deed there was a chance that he could have seen me doing something bad you know he, there was a chance he could have seen me doing you know committing a sin but alhamdulillah when someone sees me doing a righteous deed you know i in the in the heart i feel good that alhamdulillah you know my a, a muslim brother saw me in the ibadat of allah in the obedience of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would this be classed and declared as a riya show off a prophet of allah rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said oh abu huraira may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know shower his mercy upon you you will get two rewards you will get two rewards number 1 for keeping your ibadat secret now this is one reward number 2 when another muslim comes to know your ibadat you will get another reward from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there are chances that he will see you doing a good deed then he may try to copy and imitate you that look he was doing the ibadat of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should i do the ibadat of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in another uh, narration uh, someone asked prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam o prophet of allah some you know i do the good deeds i do the good deeds you know someone you know then i hear people praising you know they are praising me rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said tilka ajilu bushra al mu'min this is the instant good news for a believer in this dunya you know one news will be when we will die the angels will come and they will give us the good news of paradise but rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you or any believer who is doing the righteous deeds and then people are praising him he does not have this intention and wish that people should praise me he is doing it for the for the pleasure of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala discloses his ibadat and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know puts this love for him in the hearts of people and they praise him he said allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give this believer you know whom people are praising him though he doesn't have any intention that people should praise him he people are praising him this is the instant good news for him in this dunya one good news will be at the time of death you know the angels will come and they will give us they will say allah takhaf you know do not fear wala tahzanu you know you don't grieve you know you are in safe hands now you know you are with us and we will take care of you you know there is nothing nothing unpleasant will happen to you you know you are going to the rahmat of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this that will be the second news but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he grants a good believer a good news in this very dunya in this very dunya so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said woman arad al akhirata who so ever chooses the akhirat meaning he his, his righteous deeds are for the for the akhirat for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa sa'al hasaiha and he makes the effort he makes the effort as due now in the ruh al maani the the book of tafsir it is written that wa sa'al hasaiha means it mean it has two meanings number 1 that 
every righteous deed should be done according to the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Number two, number two, it should be done regularly. It should be done regularly. There's a hadith of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in which he says, the most beloved action to Allah is the action which is no matter how little it is, but it is done regularly, it is most beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, one hadith I will mention, one thing I will mention, and then I will conclude my talk. And that, when I read that, and it really, you know, you know, it really made me scared, and I was really scared, you know, when I, when I, when I read this. Mufti Shafi rahmatullah alayhi, you've, you've heard this hadith, there's hadith Prophet sallallahu sometimes a person, you know, he keeps on doing all the bad deeds. Then at the time of death, you know, he recites the kalma, you know, he goes from this dunya with iman. And there's a hadith Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa in the same hadith, sometimes a person, he's doing all the good deeds. Then before the death, he utters such, you know, such displeasing words from his mouth that, you know, he goes from this dunya without iman. You know, Mufti Safi Rahmatullah writes, who, you know, a person all of his lifetime has been doing all the good deeds. And then at the time of death, he uttered such a displeasing word that, you know, that made him go from this near without Iman. You know what he writes? He says, this happens to normally to the people who do not do the good deeds regularly. You know, sometimes they do it, sometimes they leave it. You know, today, maybe someone read Quran today, two days, three days, then left it, and then twisted the Quran after five days or after months. Then after one, then he took and picked the Quran up. Or someone came to masjid for you know for a week, then left it, and then you know then 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 he just went back and you know became lazy. And then you know so, you know not regularly. Whenever you feel like you do it, when you don't feel like you don't do it, Mufti Shafi Rahmatullah lies. You know such things happens to those people who are not regular in their amals. You know, this is this is something that we need to you know we need to ponder over and think about our, our own self what we are doing if this if such things is happening to us sometimes we are active sometimes we are lazy then we should we should do toba to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then we should seek Allah's help that Allah you help us that we continue with the righteous deeds regularly till our death you know what Allah says wa'bud rabbaka hatta ya'tiyakal yakeen you know, worship your Lord, do the ibadat of your Lord, not only month of Ramadan, or on, on, on Friday, or occasionally, but Allah is a continue worshipping your Lord till what time? Wa'abud rabbaka hatta ya'atiyakal yakin till the last breath. Till the death. Keep on doing the good deeds. Then inshallah we can hope from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the death. At the time of death, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will receive his help and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect our iman and then inshallah through the sincerity and through the regularly our good amals inshallah at the time of death we will receive the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He will protect our, our us against the shaitan and then inshallah we can hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take us from this dunya with iman. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept this majlis and make a means of our forgiveness. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina wa Mawlana Muhammadun wa la alihi wa sahbihi wa barik wa sallim Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatun wa fi l'akhirati hasanatun wa kina adab al-nar Rabbana la tuzik kulubana ba'da iz hadaytana wa hablana min ladunka rahma innaka anta al-wahab Rabbana tukabbal minna innaka anta al-sami'u la'alim wa tuba alayna innaka anta tawabu al-rahim wa sallallahu ta'ala la khayri khalqihi Muhammadun wa la alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين